let's talk about getting field experience in global health. So you've decided that you want to work in global health, but how do you get a job in global health if you have no experience? And how do you get experience if you haven't got a job? And this is a problem faced by so many public health professionals early on in their careers. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can get field experience as a student, for example, doing an elective, as a volunteer, or as an intern. So I'm gonna to talk to you about three things. Firstly, what field experience is and why it's important. Secondly, how to be safe, both in terms of your own safety, but also in terms of being responsible in the environment in which you're working. In other words, do no harm. And finally, I'm gonna talk about how you can find the right opportunity for you. Now, the best way to get insights and understanding of the current health problems around the world is to immerse yourself in the determinants of health. In other words, be physically there, go to the coalface, go to a challenging setting abroad. Now, this could be within a clinical setting, it could be within a social service organization, it could be within a governmental or non-governmental setting. Getting to the grassroots community level allows you to complement what you've learned in the classroom and through research papers, etc., etc., with on the ground exposure. And this is what we call field experience. And it's important because you'll get first-hand exposure as to how it is that health outcomes are a function of the social determinants of health, cultural norms, political systems, climate geography, economic status, and so much more. And together we call these things the determinants of health, and they're all important factors that influence the health status of individuals and certain populations. I have another video on social determinants of health, so please take a look at that if you're interested. Learning in the field means getting involved with any number of activities, and this might include supporting frontline healthcare, or working on a local health promotion campaign, or getting physical and helping dig a well or build a clinic, or working in an office and helping the local authority plan a new service. Getting some field experience is going to widen your future career prospects, and it's going to help you build real expertise. And here's what else you're going to gain. You're going to have a much better sense of what the real health and real health systems problems are in the global health space. And that will help you sharpen your own career goals and help you better understand where it is that you can fit in and where you can make a difference. Next, and this is important, you're going to meet and you will work with other like-minded people. And you'll be able to start the process of building your own professional network. And I promise you that will stand you in good stead for many years to come. Next, you're going to get actual tangible experience in areas like cross-cultural effectiveness, low resource decision making, demonstrating flexibility and adaptability, and understanding the all-important no-do gap. In other words, this is the gap between what researchers and experts say should happen and what actually happens. And finally, you're going to get a sense of the diversity of the human experience and the likeness of humankind, how it is that we're woven together and we can engage as global citizens. Now what you're not going to do is you're not going to jump on an aeroplane with a stethoscope in one hand and a syringe in another hand and fly off to some developing country and hope to do some good. That's not how it works. What you need to do is you need to work with an existing organization. But how do you find the right organization, the organization that will make sure that you work in a, an environment that's safe and that you make a real contribution in the communities that you work? Okay, so let's talk about nine things that you need to do to find the right experience for you. A few things to keep in mind when looking at possible organizations to work with. One. What kind of work and learning will they set up for you to do? Some organizations give volunteers responsibilities that are way outside their area of competency, and this can lead to them doing more harm than good. And by the way, this does actually happen. Two, is the organization being authentic about what makes sustainable change? And here's a hint. Sustainable change is created by capacitating local community members and people who are in the community over long periods of time. And unfortunately, this isn't usually done by short-term volunteers. But volunteers and interns can be a spoke in the wheel of improvement. But the wheel itself needs to be led and made up of local, long-term community members and professionals. And what redundancies and double-checking will be in place to confirm that your efforts are safe, helpful, and ethical? Four, how will your safety and your security and your health be ensured? Make sure that the organization you work with has got a plan for if you get sick or if you fall victim to crime or if some other issue comes up. We have to take care of ourselves if we're going to help other people. Number five, will your transportation and living expenses be provided for? And if not, is the overall cost of the experience very clearly laid out? So is the organization abiding by fair trade learning? And there's a link in the description below that will tell you more about that. And is it making sure that the work that goes into hosting and mentoring you is recognized and that you aren't depleting resources rather than adding to them? Six, 
Does the organization have an explicit ethical code of conduct? Does it have an affiliation with a governmental or faith-based group? And do you agree with it or with them? Seven, are you able to speak with other people who have done field experience with that organization? And if you are able to, I suggest that you do. Some organizations might offer you opportunities to get clinical experience that you wouldn't be able to get in your home country. This might seem exciting and the temptation to do it might be considerable. The truth is that you'll be putting patients at unnecessary risk and oftentimes you'll actually be causing harm. And what you're doing might actually be illegal, even if it's not enforced. So if you're a medical practitioner of any sort, don't perform any procedure or undertake any practice that you wouldn't be perfectly comfortable to and licensed to back at home. Of course, you might be in a teaching environment or you might be learning new things, but make sure that these are appropriate for the level of student that you are and that you're closely supervised by a competent practitioner. When in doubt, err on the side of saying no thanks when asked to do something that is invasive or high risk. Number nine, make sure that the initiatives that you are supporting are locally led and not something that is being imposed on the local community from outside. So where to from here? You've decided that you'd like to get some field experience. Uh, I told you that I'd tell you what to do next. You've been watching the video and you still feel none the wiser. Well, hang in there. I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do next. So keep watching. I'm gonna introduce you to an organization that is arguably the world leader in terms of providing opportunities for young professionals and students who want to get global health field experience. It's a nonprofit called Child Family Health International, or CFHI. Uh, they're based in the, in the San Francisco Bay Area. I am extremely impressed with them, and I highly recommend that you click on the link in the description below and go and check them out. CFHI partners with over 200 universities and has over 12,000 alumni in its almost 30-year history of providing global health field experience opportunities. CFHI has 40 field experiences in 11 countries for medical students, residents, public health students, pre-health students, pre-medical students, engineering students, global health students, or junior professionals, as well as multidisciplinary trainees. You'll get to contribute to global health work alongside local community members within existing health and social service systems. The organization has developed expert guidelines for students going abroad and in-country procedures that are safe, ethical, and sustainable. Again, I highly recommend that you click on the link in the description below. Go and check them out. They're a fantastic organization. Highly, highly, highly recommended. Thanks for watching this video. Stay and watch another video. Click on the subscribe button and the little bell if you want notifications of future videos. If you're looking for more in-depth public health teaching videos, go to learnmore365.com. I've got some courses there that you might be interested in. Okay, that's me. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Please hang up and try again.